What's up guys, in today's video, we're gonna be reacting, uh, basically having a watch along to Hannah Ebling's video on print on demand outdated tips for 2023 that you should not be doing. I'm excited to see what her suggestions are. I hope you are too. By the way, of course, I'm gonna link to this video in the description. Show her some love if you like her content. I'll be reacting to it as we watch it. Uh, let's get to it. All right, guys, I'm excited to watch this video. By the way, I'm going to put it on 1.5x speed. I'm a little bit of a crazy person. I watch everything on 2x speed, so I'll put it on 1.5 for the watch along. Uh, hopefully, you guys don't mind. Today, I'm going to be sharing some print on demand tips and strategies that I see a lot of people doing or recommending other people do that you should not be doing and should definitely stop if you want your business to continue to grow into the future and especially in 2023. Some of these tips and strategies may have worked for a time, but they just do not serve you anymore. Some of this is just flat out bad advice that you may have heard that you should definitely not be doing in your business. Hopefully it's nothing that you hear me say on my channel. <laughs> that would be embarrassing. Let's go. If you want to succeed and make a lot of sales. I'm Hannah and on my channel, I share all about print on demand and making passive income. So if that is something you're interested in, I would love it if you would subscribe down below and give this video a like. It really helps out my channel. Uh, she ha only has like 8,000 subscribers right now. So definitely show her some love. It's going to be linked in the description. Uh, I know the smaller YouTubers like, would love, you know, the, the positive feedback and the bump in subscribers. Now let's get on to those outdated tips. This first tip is one that I continue to hear a few gurus telling other people they should be doing, and that is copying the descriptions and titles of best-selling products. Not only is this super frustrating for the person who went to the trouble of writing that description and title and then someone just copy and paste it on their own listing, it actually is not even going to help you if you want to make sales. Some of those items are best sellers and they are already ranking high in searches when people are looking for those specific keywords. So if you are trying to compete in those same niches, having the exact same description as someone who is already getting a bunch of sales is not going to serve you because there is nothing to differentiate your two listings. So when someone searches up those keywords that you're trying to compete on, they are probably going to end up buying the one that has already been validated with sales and purchase the first one that they see. So if you want even a chance to stand out, I think it serves you more to actually write your own descriptions and titles and try to improve on what has been working for other people instead of... Yeah, I think it's good advice, generally speaking. I remember a couple years back when I felt like that, that piece of advice was like a lot more prevalent. Um, on Amazon merch, especially just cause, and she said in this video, this is for both Amazon merch and Etsy, but on Amazon merch, because the listings are sold by Amazon, it's not even like there's a breadcrumb trail of like who copied who, uh, if you were to copy like a title or a description. And I think, you know, I don't necessarily know that it's like a really bad thing, but it's, I'm, I'm with her. Like I don't copy other people's titles or descriptions. I write them my own. Nowadays you can use like chat GPT, get AI suggestions. So um, I'm all for like having unique titles, unique descriptions. Just copying something that someone else is trying. You want to do something better and new. I actually have an entire video of how I go about creating my descriptions and title for all of my print on demand products. So you can take a look at that here. And it just is going to show you how you can really fill your description. You are just a beginning piece of print on demand advice that I think is super outdated at this point is that you should be buying packs of pre-made t-shirt designs. I know this is super appealing if you are just a beginning designer and you want to fill your shop with a bunch of things as quick as possible but there are two reasons that I think you should stay away from buying these packs of pre-made t-shirt designs. The first one is that if someone is selling just a bunch of vectors or SVG files, you are probably not the only one who has bought this and had the idea to upload these to your print-on-demand shop. So if you post one design, likely there's 10 or 20 other people with the exact same one, so it gives you no chance to stand out. And the next reason I think that you should never be doing this is because a lot of times these stores on Etsy or some other sites are taking best-selling designs that people have already created and ripping them off of their products and packing them and selling them as their own when in reality those are from someone else a lot of times yeah it's honestly it's sad but true you know what i mean a lot of them are probably stolen um actually i can't say probably a lot of these bundles though for sure we don't necessarily know the origins and um can't help but wonder if it's the original designer that is the one uploading and selling them i, I have a feeling it's not in a lot of cases so i agree there and, um, you know, for another note too, I don't want to take it out of her mouth if she's about to say it, but yeah, if you're a beginner and you're using other people's designs, well, you're not getting any better at designing. You'll even see in the Etsy listing for these bundles that it says you can use it for print on demand. Sometimes that is just completely made up. And if the original seller ever sees that one of their designs you have posted, even if you didn't know it was not safe for resale, you could risk having your account terminated and you definitely will have to delete that listing. I've had that. Yeah. Another piece of good advice there too. If there's repercussions for even though you didn't know any better, it's like, well, you know, they don't know what you know, right? They don't know necessarily how many people have ripped off their designs and given people fake rights to to sell them, right? So it could get down a rabbit hole. But at the same time, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if there's like a good clear cut answer of like what's right, what's wrong here. Um, 
for sure, like things can be wrong, but I'm saying, I don't know how we can validate every single time that we use a service like Creative Fabrica. Um, if you go to a place like Vexels though, where it's like only Vexels designers that are creating those designs, then you know for sure you're safe. Where you get to Creative Fabrica is where it gets like a little bit crazy because of how many people are able to sell. And um, you know, you can't validate every single graphic asset that's uploaded to that platform. So I, I definitely um, see where she's going with this. This happened to make it completely your own. So you don't have to completely make all of your graphics from scratch. You should right. stop doing, especially if you are a new seller, is pricing your items at zero dollars profit to be able to make your first sales. I completely understand where this is coming from. You want to incentivize your buyers to make purchases from you. And especially if you're in something like Merch by Amazon, where you are trying to tear up, those first 10 and 25 sales are super important to get really fast. So it really doesn't matter to you if you make a profit or not. The way that this backfires is sometimes if you are pricing your items at the bottom of the barrel, it is going to scare potential customers away because either the number seems a little bit off or it's just so much lower than all the other products in that niche and that scares them away. People are used to paying about a standard price range for shirts and sweatshirts and if anything deviates too far away from that, you could risk not getting a sale. So I don't think as a newbie. That's a really good point um, and it's something I definitely consider but like that last, the way she framed it at the end there, the really strong point, it's like if you don't, if you deviate too far from the acceptable range, like I think t-shirts probably like 15 to 20 bucks. Um, you know, if you're like $13 or even $25, it's like, well, those are, you know, on the extremes of what people are probably expecting to pay. And uh, good point. You should be pricing your items as high as you possibly can. But I would take a look at a lot of the other shirts that are selling well and try to stay in that middle range to make sales. This is also great too, because even if you are just getting started and making a few sales a month, wouldn't you rather make some profit from those than absolutely none at all? A little over a year ago, I started pricing all of my standard shirts on Merch by Amazon at a flat $19.99 across the board. And I haven't seen any decrease in sales. In fact, I've seen my sales continue to climb and climb every single month. So I really think that you don't need to start by pricing your items really low and then change them to a high higher price once you've made sales this yeah i mean it can go both both ways for what it's worth too i mean i'm not against the low price strategy at the same time it's just a little bit of extra work to have to reprice um there is the other side of it too where if you make that first sale you're you're going to be indexed in amazon merch's catalog forever uh, if you don't get the first sale you know and you know what i mean if you just if you price high right out of the gate it's like if that design doesn't sell and it falls off you have to at least be willing to like refill the upload slot Right. If you just let that upload slot not go filled when it gets removed um, from the automated removal process, then it's like a wasted upload slot. Whereas if you price low, you know what I mean? You're it's 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 one extra thing you control to help incentivize customers from buying from you. Um, and there's definitely no like right or wrong way of doing it. Uh, it would. And again, like it would really help if we had like access to Amazon's data for things like click through rate and conversion rate as a function of price. But we don't have that. So. I guess, you know, I, I, it's like, I agree. I disagree. I, I see both sides of it. I see both sides. Strategy is something that a lot of people tried to be able to do the lowest price so that when people sorted products by lowest to highest, yours would become the top of the page in sorting it that way. However, now so many people know about this secret trick. And so there's three, four, five, six pages of items that are all priced with no profit. So you aren't even going to stand out that way and you might as well make some profit. The next mistake that I see a lot of print on demand sellers doing and a lot of people recommending is trying to let organic traffic do all of the work in your print on demand business. Gone are the days I think when you could just post a bunch of listings and you are going to get a bunch of sales and traffic right away. It's a lot more complicated to play this game in some ways. And while you can build a successful business with no social media following or not a lot of outside traffic, I think in those early stages of starting your business, being able to give your listings a little boost with some outside traffic helps a ton. So in both. Definitely agree. It's just easier said than done, right? It's it's tough. You know, it's tough these days. Building a social media following is tough if you don't want to pay, pay to play. Um, getting sales on platforms like Amazon and Etsy, you know, it's tough if you don't want to pay to play. Um, I don't know anybody that has like the single solution. It seems like it's a mixed bag, you know, and at the end of the day, it's that equation of your time is money. So is your time better spent making more designs and posting them for sale? Or is it better spent like trying to create like a social media following that you can market to down the line? And uh, everybody, you know, you got to stick to your strengths, stick to what you know, stick to what works. Etsy and Amazon, once your product has made a sale, it is going to actually start to rank on those first pages, depending on what the niche is. But if you've never had a sale before, it doesn't even have a bestseller rank, so it is not going to show up really early in search. So sometimes if you can help by bringing traffic either from your own social media or creating a specific brand page for your print on demand items, and you can just help Amazon or Etsy make that first sale, that item is going to start ranking organically now that it has made the first sale, and you're going to start getting a lot more of that organic traffic and sales. And you know, for what it's worth, like there was an Amazon agency that I use for Amazon FBA 
and they actually I did a video on this or a couple videos in the past maybe like 2020 but basically like that's one of the main things I sat down with the CEO and he said look like this is one of the main ways we're having some success that a lot of people aren't talking about and I was like all right fill me in and he's like it's driving external traffic to your listings Amazon is loving it and we're seeing it respond very positively Uh, I did it to one of my listings and literally saw me, I think I jumped from like the 14th organic rank on the primary most valuable keyword. Now it wasn't print on demand, it was an FBA product I sell, but I jumped up to number five, if I remember correctly. And it was like over the duration of a couple weeks. So yeah, this is good advice. But it, again, it's like you have to execute it, which is the tough part. This has worked super well. Oh, and that agency, sorry, they did ads. We ran um, Facebook and Google ads, but they did it for me. That was the nice part, so for me where I will push an item on one of my social media pages that I created for some of my brands and once I get that first sale from someone that I knew came from Instagram that item all of a sudden starts selling super well on Etsy and I'm getting all these organic views and traffic because I made that first sale once again this isn't a complete must but a lot of people get super discouraged in the early stages of their business because they expect that all of this traffic is just going to come to them without them doing anything but if you really want to start seeing momentum I definitely suggest trying to get some additional eyes and traffic on your listings and help Etsy and Amazon make those first sales. The next piece of outdated print on demand advice that I still continue to hear people say is that you should let Etsy and Amazon just automatically control all of your advertising campaigns. If in your business you've started to dabble into the world of advertising, it's super tempting when you don't know what you're doing to just put your listings on automatic and have Amazon do all of the work. But you'll see pretty soon that Amazon and Etsy really quickly spend all of your money that you have for that campaign. It's really easy. Yes, they do find a way to spend your money. <laughs> this is a nuanced thing for sure with advertising. Yeah, because it's like you set a budget, you set bids, or you go to Etsy where you can't set bids, but you can set a budget. And uh, yeah, it's definitely a rabbit hole that requires a little bit of time to go down. Um, you definitely don't want to put it on full autopilot because the least, the, the less you do, and I'm sure she's about to say this, but it's like the less you do, the more of your money they're going to spend and most likely the less efficiently they're going to spend it to find yourself using up all of your money and spending it on these keywords that aren't really going to convert into sales because they don't have anything to do with your listing. So I think it is super important to manually run and monitor all of your campaigns. This doesn't mean that you can't have any automatic campaigns, but I think you need to be very conscientious of how much you are going to be bidding per click on those advertising campaigns. I do have quite a few automatic campaigns on Amazon, but all of those, I intentionally set my click bidding price no more than 25 cents, and I usually don't make my daily budget more than a dollar or two when I'm first getting started with that campaign. That way I can really manage and see how this is performing, and I don't have to worry about Amazon spending $10 and not even getting one sale because they are just bidding as much money as I will let them on a random thing. And so I always like to shout out the um, <laughs> the story that I got to tell of somebody that I did a one on one call with who had spent like over 30 grand on his FBA product to make like, I think, like 15 grand in revenue, not even profit. And it's just one of those things where it's like, yeah, um, what she's saying is true. Like, if you let them spend your money, they will spend your money. There's no shortage of uh, ad inventory to fill on those platforms if the price is right. And uh, he basically, you know, set really high bids, really high budgets and the rest is history. Some ways, Amazon and Etsy, they really do want you to succeed with your ads, but they also aren't gonna hesitate from spending as much ad money as you will let them because this is becoming more revenue for them. So you want to be really conscious in either monitoring what specific keywords you're going to bid on or just making your bids very, very low and slightly increasing those as you see that they're working. Because if you give Amazon and Etsy 10 or $20 a day to work with, they probably are going to spend all of your money and that doesn't guarantee that you are going to get results. So. Yes, guys, uh, it's true. And I mean, you can set like negative keywords on your Amazon ad campaigns on Etsy. And this is talking about auto campaigns on Etsy. uh, It's kind of you're just forced into doing their equivalent of an auto campaign. They don't have manual campaigns as an option and you can't control your bids either. But you can go in there and you can uh, click search terms and it will show you what keywords and what phrases they're spending your money on. And sometimes they'll just like append the wrong product type. So you say shirt and they'll be advertising it for like, I don't know, hat, hats or something, like make something up, towels. Uh, and you, you're like, okay, that's never gonna convert. And then you gotta kill that, you can turn it off. So yeah, there's definitely things you can do. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. If you have another video suggestion for me to do a reaction to, you can either drop it in the comments or email me. Check out Hannah's channel. I will, of course, link to this video in the description. I know she would appreciate some new subscribers. You can tell her you came from my channel. I'm sure she'd appreciate that. Uh, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and I will see you at the next one. Thank you